Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Erin and I'm president of CUNITY and I've got my co-educator and co-host Susanna Feaster educating with me. So we're going to give people just a quick moment to hop on and then I will show my slides. But while we're waiting for that, I'd love for you to look in the right hand sign of your screen, at least if you're on a desktop, if you're on your phone, it should be there as well. And if you can just type in the chat where you're from and what profession you're in. So whether you're a nail tech, a stylist, a colorist, a tattoo artist, we'd love to hear where you're from. And I will start. So go ahead and use the chat screen. We're not gonna call you out. We're not gonna make you speak publicly, but we definitely wanna know who's here and where um, what you're doing for a, for a profession. All right, well, we will wait for people to post the chat, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions throughout this session, go ahead and chat. And please, when we ask questions, we really do encourage you to engage and be interactive. Uh, Lord knows that we've all been on enough Zooms, Zooms and enough videos and enough education online. So it's really important that we can establish a sense of community and that you can really interact with this material and apply it to your own life. So with that, I will get started. All right, so I've got my screen up and Suzanne, if you just wanna confirm that you can see it once I play from the slideshow. So can everyone see the full screen? Susanna, can you see it? And you can just tell me verbally. There. Okay, awesome, thank you. So the point of this webinar is really talking of all about financial health and financial well-being. This is something that has been coming to us every single day, obviously, um, solopreneurs and entrepreneurs and service-based businesses have gotten hit extraordinarily uh, hard over the past few months, several months. So the intent of this module and this webinar is to give you some practical and actionable tips to help you increase your financial wellness. So again, I will be leading this presentation and my colleague Susanna will be joining us. But before we get into the actual content of the presentation, we have an extremely exciting contest that I wanna make sure everyone is aware of. So to be entered in this contest, all you have to do is follow Cunity and Booksy Biz on Instagram. So then also share a photo or a screenshot, whether you're watching this from a desktop or your phone, and just tag both of us, both Booksy and Cunity, on your story. And we will select the winners in a couple hours. Now, let me show you the amazing things that you are going to be winning. So number one, one person will be winning a free wall detailer. Another person will be winning a cordless magic, magic clip. And the other person will be, in, will be registered and receive a free enrollment to our Plan to Prosper online interactive education. So it's a five module curriculum and it will really go deeper into helping you increase your overall financial health and help you earn more money and also save more money. Before we go into this, I do wanna encourage some interaction here. On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you with the numbers? And a 10 means you're very confident, you love numbers, you enjoy them, you're great at math. One means not so much. So go ahead and just post that in the chat and I'll give that a couple minutes. And then I'll also pose the next question. And so if you just wanna write the number by your question. Um, for number two, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your overall financial health? 10 being very strong, got savings in the bank, no stress, no worries. One being maybe it's a little bit of a mess and you have quite a bit of worry. So go ahead and take a moment. And Susanna, do we have um, any numbers in the chat? Yeah, we do. We have a few sevens. Okay. This is for the first question, I'm guessing, with how confident you are. Okay. Uh, a few sevens, an eight. And then Fantastic. we have a one and a seven, another seven. Another and eight. That's great. And I really want to encourage you to be transparent here. So if you guys are hearing those, you're like, eh, that's not me. That's okay. So um, you're going to hear some of Susanna and I's personal journeys and stories throughout this as well. And if you're not there, or even if you're at a seven, we wanna get you to an eight, to a nine, to a 10. And if you didn't type in the chat and you feel like it's a little bit lower, we're hoping that this session can help today. 
So I will move on, but really, I love this quote and really the topic of financial literacy and why become more financially literate, whether it's with numbers and money in or with its with uh, money out and your overall expenses. It's simply to help you have more options and for you to have a greater level of peace and freedom overall. And what we do at CUNITY, for those of you who are unfamiliar with CUNITY, if you've heard of CUNITY, go ahead and put something in the chat. If you're new to CUNITY, also say new. I'd love to know if this is people's first time experiencing CUNITY. But what we really do is we provide education, coaching, and visual thinking tools to help professionals, individuals, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and what we also refer to as intrapreneurs, so someone who has a business within an existing business, to experience another level of financial success. And part of doing that is making numbers, making um, sales simple, visual, fun, and creating structure for future freedom. So part of what we teach at CUNITY is all about unity. That's actually the DNA of where CUNITY comes from. So it's really shifting the word from, it's really shifting from living to a state of or, so profit or creativity or technical or creativity to and, and really defining and, and acknowledging that there's magic in the middle. So it's not profit or people, it's not business or creativity, it's not head or heart, it's and. And we really wanna shift that thinking. So. On today's session, we're talking, of course, about money, but we also want you to recognize that there's more currencies beyond money. And we talk about these three currencies as ATM, which is your attention, time, and money. And um, these currencies are, you make withdrawals and you make deposits every single day. So I also want you to think about throughout this presentation that your attention and time will actually directly correlate to how much money you make. So that's something just to think about through um, as a lens as we go through this presentation. So as an outline, we're gonna start off with some tips around money in, then we're gonna talk a little bit about money out, then we're gonna talk about money management and really eight basic financial tips um, that are simple and actionable and that I hope you can put into place right after the session. Now, my co-presenter, Susanna, she was blonde in this photo. So she was blonde about, I don't know, two weeks ago. And um, Susanna has a really powerful story about uh, her career in beauty and wellness. But I want to get across this point very clear. You can make a lot of money in beauty and wellness, and especially as a solopreneur. But it really um, is tied to your money in. And oftentimes people think they need to lower their expenses or they, they don't make enough money, but you can control how much you make. So Susanna, if you just wanna comment a little about your before and after, before you really started putting some of these practices into play, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. And I did wanna say there's a, um, everyone commented so far that they are new to CUNITY. So welcome great. everybody. Great, thank you. We're super excited to have you. Um, yeah, I think for me, like the journey as a creative, I think is probably similar to a lot of yours where um, there was a little bit of insecurity around not going to college or finishing college, actually. So I was always a little nervous about what my income was going to be. So I really remember thinking like, okay, if I can get to that like 50K market, I've like kind of like, I'm okay in the okay range, like, you know, as if like, you know, I did go to college, I have an okay career, you know, and then once I, you know, went through CUNITY and then started seeing how much I could really make, I was like, holy cow, why doesn't everyone know this, you know? So I think it's really cool to see, you know, myself and my peers and, you know, a lot of people in our industries making well over six figures and far surpassing people um, in different industries. So I think that not only are we blessed to have something that we are super passionate about, but like there's just a lot more money than I think people realize. Excellent. Thank you so much, Susanna. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Susanna's particular journey throughout this presentation. But I don't, again, and I'm, I'm it's interesting to me that a lot of you rated yourselves as seven or eights because that's not always what we see, right? We typically see a low, lower level of confidence when it comes to uh, finance and numbers. And a lot of times people can re relate with this ball of chaos, right? Profit and loss, uh, gross versus net pay. It can be confusing and overwhelming. And Susanna has a really funny story that she might tell you later on about credit cards. And um, a lot of times it's just simply due to a lack of understanding. So our goal is to really simplify that and cut through the noise so we can give you some really simple practical tips. And part of part of that is just giving you some background. So seven out of 10 Americans live paycheck to paycheck. And that's a widely known statistic. This is not our statistic, but it's widely known and published. And it's been uh, very prominent throughout the pandemic because that's why a lot of people have gotten into trouble. 
and this is what I find very interesting, only 33% of parents actually talk to their kids about money. 33% of adults rate themselves as a C, D, or F on their knowledge of personal finance. So some of the common challenges that we particularly see is there ang there's oftentimes anxiety when it comes to money or numbers, right? I don't know if you guys can relate to this guy, like just, just a little bit of overwhelm. Um, there's avoidance and that's Suzanne. I know the myth that or um, the challenge that you really identified with was just avoidance of avo avoidance of putting things into practice, not making it a priority, which kind of goes hand in hand, not asking for help. And then lastly, a lower level of fun of understanding around financial literacy. So Susanna, can you tell your story about, um, credit cards and, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and obviously <laughs> Susanna has come, has transformed this, but, it's, it's just an example of how common this really is. So go ahead, Susanna. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I like know myself really well. And I kind of want to know from the group, if you can put in the chat, if you tend to be more of a spender or more of a saver, like you just like love to swipe that card because that's how I am. So <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it, you know, but I'd love to know from this group who, if you're more of a spender or more of a saver, but I'm definitely a spender. So I put parameters for myself, which means I do not have credit cards because I just know how crazy I am. I'm just going to swipe that thing and then I'm going to be in so much debt. So I was telling Aaron earlier when I first got married, I just told my husband like, oh, can you just put on your card if we didn't have enough cash? So I kept saying, you know, put it on the card. But I had no idea that credit cards had really high limits. Like I thought they went up to like a thousand dollars or something. I had no idea. So it kind of goes to the last point here of having a low level of understanding. So we got ourselves in a big mess that we are out of now, but yeah, it was pretty bad once I actually looked at what the situation was. And I think we both were in the avoidance phase of like, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. And then when you look at it, it's like, oh my gosh, this is worse than I thought. Yeah. So I would love to hear which of these challenges apply to you. And thank you so much for sharing that, Susanna. And I think what I want you to take from what Susanna shared is that understanding yourself is really important and then you can change it. And what Susanna did is she learned. She went through a couple of financial courses. She got some information and now she's complete, almost completely out of debt and in a really great financial spot um, from a money in and money out perspective. So Susanna, has anyone commented which challenge applies to them? Not yet, but we have a few spenders out there. Yeah, a few spenders. Okay. I love it. So just think about this. And then throughout that, think about after this session, how you can change that and maybe just take one action. So Again, I really want to go back to this. Why become financially literate? Why understand this is so you can have more options. And part of the why is understanding what your why is, right? And knowing what your vision of success is, what your vision of financial success looks like. So for some people, they're really motivated by money. For some people, they want to really live in a nice house and drive a nice car. For some people, they want to travel and enjoy um, going out to eat. I don't know if you have any, if there's any foodies out there, but I know a lot of people that like spending a lot of money on dinners and enjoying that quality of food. Um, sometimes it's just to spend more time with others, right? Money may not be your primary motivate motivator. You might want to enjoy your life and have good times with friends. Might be to have a child or to provide a certain kind of lifestyle for your child, or it could be traveling. And what I really want you to think about here is what is your definition of financial success? And go ahead and write that in the chat screen. What does financial success look like to you? Is it the ability to have a bunch of money in the bank? Is it the ability to travel? And think about how you can create that because as a solopreneur, you are in a really, really powerful position um, to create the kind of life you want. Susanna, did we get anyone commenting on, on their vision of financial success? Um, not yet, but we did have Nicole commented at bullets three and four from our previous slide. Perfect. Uh, Thank the you, Nicole. That she struggles with. And then um, we have Deshaun who said financially, financial freedom is what he's looking for. I love it. So important. Martin, the bank travel. We've got a lot of travel. That's great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I think for me, Aaron, you know, going through this pandemic was so scary for our industry because mm -hmm. we were straight up out of work. I mean, I never thought I would see that day. So for me, it's financial freedom, but almost also the side of like the peace about it of like, if something like that happens, if I have an injury, if something like that happens, you know, if my salon closes for some reason that, you know, I'm going to be okay. You know, mm -hmm. we have money in the bank, real estate investments, mm -hmm. um, ability to spend knowing I have amount coming back in. Thanks guys. 
I love it. So what I'm hearing is this commonality of choice, right? Money gives you choices like we talked about. So if you want to travel, if your salon shuts down, if you have greater level of peace, if you have money, you can invest in things like real estate. So thank you so much for sharing. So a couple of whys, you know, is to pay off and be free of debt, buy things you want, support loved ones, upgrade your housing. I know Susanna, you did that recently and you're very, very happy about that. Um, Saving for a rainy day travel, clearly a big one with this group. That's my personal, one of my personal whys as well. Pursue creative opportunities and then also to give back. As well as, of course, the final one, which is to be free of worry. And I think that's something that we've seen so much. And what we know can change, um, can change the trajectory of someone's life is education to allow you to be free of that worry. Because that's not living a quality or prosperous life if you're stressed about finances, right? So as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about two main keys to financial health. Number one is money in and number two is money out. Now, money in is something that you absolutely can control. Of course, it's challenging right now when you have capacity restrictions and being in a service profession when you can't, um, you know, when you can't see as many guests and people are maybe afraid about coming in. But money in is something that you can control. And it's not just about when you're actually in practicing your craft. It's what you do outside of that as well. And then, of course, money out. And these two together uh, are really important. Now, what I also want to talk about is something called ROI. And I'm curious if people have heard of this term ROI. Um, some people have. Some people, many people have not because it's just not commonly used uh, in the beauty industry or in the wellness industry, it's a very common financial term and it's just to evaluate the effectiveness or profitability on an investment, right? So I want you to think about that with your personal money and um, what could be a high return versus a low return investment of your money. So a lower return, for example, could be a new iPhone. Now factor out if part of your part of your goal is, is exhibiting your creativity in your portfolio, but I would argue that a higher return of it on investment versus going from an eight to a nine iPhone, right, is investing in education. And Susanna is an amazing example of that with what a little bit of education did for her career and for her earnings, which she'll talk about. Another example of a lower return on investment is a one-time wear outfit that you're never gonna wear again. A higher return could be a staple wardrobe item, right? If you maybe wanna invest a little bit more, but you wear it two, three times a week, right? Next would be daily Starbucks. That could be considered a lower return of, on investment. A higher return would be an espresso machine. So you can make your own and, and not be given money to uh, corporate America every day at Starbucks. But what we talk about when it comes down to ROI is nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity. And we've found based on numerous studies and based on some of our own research that on average in beauty and wellness professions, there is something called the 71% opportunity gap. And it's this weird statistic that shares that 71% of new clients in a salon or spot never return for a second visit, right? And that's on industry average. So think about yourself, how you can close that gap and how you can close that missed opportunity. The next one is 71% of clients that enter a salon or a spa were never even offered a product, right? So they were never even given the choice to say yes or no. And then 71%, and this one's very specific for salon, 71% of salon hours actually go unsold. So if you think about that, this is pre-pandemic, right? So if 71% on, on average of hours were never even being sold, you can make it back to your pre-COVID-19 revenues very, very quickly. Um, and this is a really good example of filling the gaps and closing the opportunity gap by increasing money in. So this is an example of someone named Kaylee. She's actually a stylist and she's super talented and she just wasn't making enough money. And she was sitting in the, in the back room kind of waiting for clients to come to her. And then she really changed her habits and she well over doubled her earnings, right? And that was strictly as a result of closing the gaps and identifying those missed opportunities. So if you think about, you know, Kaylee missing those 71% opportunities every single day versus capitalizing them, that's what it does to your money in. Uh, this is another example. A salon owner, actually my business partner created this at his own business, um, trying to communicate this visually. And so when we see things visually, it can help put things into perspective, right? So we want to close and bring this 29% um up 
And part of that is how and where you invest your time. And the good news is, is where you put your time and where you put your attention, remember those two other currencies, can directly correlate to how much money you make. Um, so Susanna, anything you wanna say about that before I move into how we look at money in and a simpler way to look at it or anything on the chat I need to know about? No, I think that we're good here. I think I already said, yeah, most people said travel and money in the bank were their reasons why. And um, yeah. I think that you guys are gonna be super excited once you hear a little bit more about just how easy it is to track these numbers. Perfect. So when we talk about money in, we look at money in, in a very simple visual way, and it's something called two number growth. Now, this is definitely where I want to hear from you in the chat. When you are driving a car, right, if you're trying to get from Florida to, let's say, Colorado, right, if you were driving there, you could probably successfully get to that destination if you were paying attention to two key things on this dashboard. I'd love to hear what those two things are. So two key metrics, and go ahead and type them in the chat. And this is something that on a given day too that you're probably looking at when you're driving your car, two key areas. Any guesses in the chat? We don't have anybody yet. I'll keep you posted. All right, I'm gonna give someone five seconds. Right, we have speed, Perfect. we have speed, the radio, the radio. <laughs> the radio, I love that one. But it's still a good one. <laughs> Uh, let's see, speed, time, speed and fuel, Okay. The rear view, gas, distance and speed, speed, gas and speed. Perfect. All right. Well, excellent guesses. And I, by the way, I love whoever said the radio because maybe that's an essential metric for you to get to where you're going if you're a lover of music. But we're really talking about these yes. control metrics. And several of you did indeed get those right. So it's really speed and gas, right? So. I want you to think about your numbers and your money in and compare it to what you look at on the dashboard of your car every day. And those two numbers in your business are client count and average ticket. And this is a way, when you multiply these two numbers together, by the way, these are the only two numbers that equal sales when you multiply together. So it's a really simple metric. At the end of the day, how many clients are you seeing? How much do they spend with you? And that will equal your sales, which especially if you're a solopreneur, that's directly correlated to your income. So to get really linear with this, if you want to write these definitions down, client count is simply the number of, a, of times clients come into the business to spend money. So this could also be considered transactions. Average ticket is the average amount of money clients spend when they come into the business, and it includes money spent on services and retail. Just like when you're driving a car and you're looking at gas and speed, if there's a blinking light, right, if you're, if you're, um, on the dashboard of your car, if a light's blinking red, right? You might pull over and you might look under the hood to see you know, what's driving those numbers or what's contributing to that flashing light. Um, and you also can figure out what impacts those numbers. So the three key things that drive your client count are referrals, retention, and rebooking. We call those drivers. The three key things that uh, grow or affect your average ticket are the sale of products, adding on services, and of course, pricing. So this is a great way. I mean, this is your path to increase your money in. So when you know that client count is down, you better believe that you should maximize every single average ticket. And these are the activities that are gonna directly drive those numbers up. So with client count, uh, when you take action today, the results will not always come today. For example, if you ask a client for a referral today, that referral may not actually be impacted or seen in your money in for another two, three weeks, right? But you're you're laying the groundwork for the future. Average ticket on, on the other hand is that's where you can see results immediately. And that's where we say you can make an ordinary day an extraordinary day. And Susanna, I think um, this was something that really helped you and this process of looking at your numbers and also tracking, which we'll get to momentarily, that has really impacted your money in. So anything you wanna say about this? Yeah, I think it's cool too, because we have like a lot of different people on this call. We have massage therapists, um, some okay, barbers, hairstylists. So when you think about your own business, a barber is probably going to end up being a way higher client count, maybe mm -hmm. a little lower average ticket, but doing a higher volume. For myself, I do a lot of color. So my client count has not increased a ton over the past decade, but my average ticket has to continue to raise my prices, add on services, that types of thing. So if you're really heavy into coloring or extensions or something like that, maybe your focus is more on average ticket um, or raising your prices or, you know, whatever it is you need to do. But yeah, I think sometimes you get to work and you're like, this is all I have for the day. 
So I have to add on or to figure out a way to make this as profitable as I possibly can. Absolutely. Thank you, Susanna. So we talk a lot of more about money in, in one of our, um, which, which I'll give you options if you're curious about how to grow your paycheck and, and maximize your sales and money in, but we're going to move on to money out next. And part of that means understanding your paycheck. And there's something we refer to as paycheck shrink, right? And this may be different if you're, um, if you're in business with yourself than if you are working for an existing business, but either way, um, what you bring in is not what you take home. So there's a very big difference between gross pay and net pay, or gross income and net income. Anyone know what the difference between those two are? I'd love for you um, to tell me what the difference is in the chat. And if you don't know, I'd love to hear if you don't know. And this is no judgment. This is just all about interacting and, and learning through this because we learn when we interact. We have, I don't know. Okay. Thank uh, you for sharing that, by the way, whoever that was. We have before and after taxes. My guess is net is minus expenses, overhead and taxes. Perfect. That's fantastic. So thank you so much for sharing. So gross is simply before taxes and other deductions. So I think someone someone said that. So that's exactly right. Net is what you take home after deductions like taxes. So if you think about it, what you're seeing every single day, you have to automatically factor out a significant portion for that um, for taxes, especially if you're in business by yourself. You need to look at estimating that quarterly. Now, I'm not going to go into those details. I just wanted to keep it really high level here. So that's already a great thing for that person who said they didn't know. Now you already know, and that's a great financial terminology that you can use and start to understand in your day to day. We also want to talk about just a few personal finance benchmarks. And again, this is not necessarily from Cunity. This is um, some metrics that we feel like are pretty strong and pretty accurate from a company called Financial Peace University. And these are a range, right? So typically savings rate, if you think on um, of your paycheck every single month or your income every single month, here's just some general benchmarks. And um, we've given the low to the high end of them. And the important thing to recognize here is when you decrease one, you can put more elsewhere, right? So if you decrease your housing down to 15%, you've got a significant portion that you can use to pay off debt or you can use to add to savings, right? So all of these are interconnected. Um, tell me, do you guys know where what percentage of your income you, span, you spend Excuse me, on housing? And if, if you don't know, I would love to hear that I don't know. If you do know, I'd love to hear what approximate percent don't have anybody yet. Okay. Well, that's okay. Go ahead and take okay. a picture. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, we have a don't know. Uh, we okay. have almost um, 40 percent. Okay. Don't know. So this is something I would encourage you to to make a quick note of. And again, I get that income fluctuates. But if you can even just look at your your kind of your bare minimum month that you know that you're going to make. And obviously right now that's a little bit tricky, um, but maybe go around the same time last year or even just maybe four, three months ago. Just take a look and see what percentage, what percentage of your income you're paying towards housing and even just start to get more intimate because that will help you start to really think about your financial decisions and make changes accordingly. So that's just a really practical small step that you can look at. Um, you know, there's always there's always the example of coffee because coffee tends to be something that almost everyone drinks or almost everyone interacts with. So if you were to buy Starbucks every day for, let's say, five dollars on average, this is what you'd be spending every given year. If you were to buy a one time espresso machine, that would be your investment. And then you basically just have to buy coffee. So if you add that up and really look at it long term, that's just a really minor example. But start to think about that for purchases larger as well. And that's your potential savings that you would make. So one example of a monthly out, money out exercise is people oftentimes don't just call. So calling your cable company, calling your internet company, if you just ask for a lower payment, you would be shocked at how many people will actually do it. So one of my colleagues actually did this, I think, with their, um, with their cable or with their internet. They just picked up the phone, spent 15 minutes, and the company just said, sure, we'd be happy to, to put you on a lower rate. That was an overall savings of four, $400, over $400 in one year, just by a 15-minute call. 
So look at some of your expenses and just say, hey, can I get that lower? That's a really practical exercise that you can do. And part of looking at money in and money out really thinks of, think, really I'd encourage you to think about investing in your career and the high ROI that that yields, which is return on investment, if you remember that. So a couple things that would generate a high ROI or return on investment in yourself is education, tools, spending time on gratitude, your professional image, and activities that will help you build your income and help you either make more money or save more money. And this is just something my business partner always talks about, the difference between frugal and cheap. So Susanna talked about herself as a spender. I'm very much a saver. Uh, that's just my personality. And that can oftentimes be at a fault. So I would really encourage you, because sometimes you know nobody wants to be labeled as cheap, right? But if you really shift your thinking, frugal is actually a really good thing, right? And it doesn't mean that you're cheap. All right, we are gonna get into money management, but I'm gonna stop, um, and these eight tips, I'm gonna stop and just kind of take a look at the chat. Okay, perfect. Before expenses and after expenses, awesome. So I'm gonna go back and we're gonna get into these eight tips and uh, welcome everyone else that's new on here. Susanna, any comments while I'm pulling back up my screen? You know what I did, and now I lost my lost my train of thought. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So I'm gonna get my screen back up. And I think too, like these days, when you look at um, high ROIs with education, that there's so much free education out there right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's you know, especially with the pandemic, it's worth looking into you know just quick tips and tricks off someone's Instagram. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. App, it's so true. You can. There's so much free education right now, so that would really be an investment of your time if we talk about high ROI. Susanna, can you see my full screen now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So eight tips. These are really practical tips. And again, please take notes. Please write in the chat. And even if you do one of these, our goal is that you will be in a better place than you were before coming on this um, free hour-long session um, that Booksy has so graciously decided to host with us. Um, so number one is going to be get closure. We talk a lot about this and it's really hard to move forward if you can't get closure on the past or something that's holding you back. So we teach something at Kennedy called the three C's, which is a repeatable cyclical system that helps you increase your focus and, and go back to it over and over again. So the first process or this green arrow is identifying what's holding you back and getting closure on that. And I'm going to talk about a couple examples. The next one, once you've cleared the slate, right, what's holding you back from being more financially successful, then you can get clear on the activities that you need to do to become more financially successful. And then lastly, the largest arrow here and the one that goes back and forth is confidence. So closure plus clarity equals confidence. And once you get confident, that's what allows you to go into action and take action consistently. And we get, dive in deeper to this process, but for now, I just want you to think about this 3C process and the first one called closure. And we have a very simple visual thinking tool we teach at Cunity, and it's called the Nine Grid. And you can go on our website if you wanna use this. Whoever wins the Plan to Prosper program will be getting this tool as well. But it's one of our most popular visual thinking tools. I actually prepped for our presentation using one as well. And it's really designed for a visual learner uh, to get unstuck, to plan projects, um, and it can be used as a storyboard, a mind map, and a step-by-step. -step. And when we use this, really practically in the concept of closure, it allows you to get it out of your head and onto paper. So I've got this example, and this is a real life example of someone named Corinne. And if you look in this center box, when Corinne was deciding what she needed to get closure on in order to be more su successful, she realized um, that she needed to get closure over some really serious financial limiting beliefs. So what I mean by that is, Su or not Susanna, Corinne was making about $32,000 a year before she came to us. And she knew she needed to make more money. She wanted to be able to get fertility treatment and she wanted to grow her family, buy a house, et cetera. But she was stuck and she couldn't really figure out why. So she laid this out there. She put in the center, get closure on my financial limiting beliefs. And you can see like a mind map in these surrounding eight boxes. She wrote all about what she needed to do to get closure over that. 
And there was actually a lot of tears in this process for her because she recognized that she'd been putting on and putting an artificial ceiling on herself because Corinne happened to grow up on welfare. She grew up on a very um, small farm with lots of children and she believed that money, she was never worthy of money, right? So once she was able to recognize that, she could start to get clear and get into action. So you can see all these steps around here. I want you guys, um, before I talk about this next example, what's something you need to get closure over as it relates to your finance? So maybe like Susanna's, she needed to stop taking out credit cards, right? She, she knew herself well enough that credit cards weren't something that was gonna work for her. So she put in the center, stop, or stop opening credit cards or cut up my credit cards, right? Another example is of Melinda. And Melinda happened to be a business owner and she had about um, nine or 10 employees and she was really overwhelmed. And she came to us and she was selling on average $2.44 of product per ticket. Um, she was overwhelmed, she wasn't leading her team and she was in a state of survival. You can see her closure process or her closure mind map was getting closure of living in a state of survival. So she was an artist and she's super creative. So she drew it out to help her make a simple visual plan on how to get closure. And it was pre-booking, it was selling retail, um, having a contest or um, no guest uh, experience team and allowing for contact list appointments, um, investing in education and things like that. And as a result, she increased her retail by 411%. She just opened a beauty school and now she's putting all of her students through community and she just has peace. You can see peace radiate from her because she just is more confident as, but first, before she could do that, she had to get closure over what was holding her back. So Susanna, did anyone share something they need to get closure on? No, they haven't yet, but I can share what, something that I've seen a lot that I've had to deal with myself, especially when you own your own business. Uh, I mean, you're charging for what you're specifically doing, right? It's not like, it's not the same as selling a product. It's like we're selling our service or selling ourselves. And as a creative, I think we sell ourselves short with how much we should be charging. So I think that's a big hurdle that I had to get kind of closure on was like, mm -hmm. no, I'm worth charging this amount of money. My work is that good. And I think that that's a difficult thing to do when you have a relationship with your guests and, you know, it makes you nervous. But I think that's a big hurdle that people have to get over. I um, totally agree. Kevin said closure on uh, mistakes that he's made. Same with Deshaun. Mm. It's a big one. Closure over mistakes, right? And think about how... If, and I'd encourage you, I think that was Deshaun that said that, Deshaun and whoever else said that. And Kevin. And Kevin. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Kevin and Deshaun, I would really encourage you to kind of, um, even if you just write something in the center and kind of make a quick mind map and write closure over financial mistakes. And then allow your mind just to populate the solutions because part of being a, a creative or visual learner, and by the way, many people identify that, is seeing and doing and putting a pen to paper and allowing that and making it real will allow you to start the process of closure and thus begin the process of change. So thank you so much for sharing that, Kevin and Deshaun. I know that can be quite personal and we've had a lot of personal examples. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Next, once we've gotten closure, we can actually move to that next um, C, which I showed you in that circle, circular wheel, which is getting clear. And clarity comes through creating an action plan. So we have numerous tools at Cunity. I just showed you an example of one of ours called the Nine Grid. Another example is something called a Q plan. And a Q plan is just our visual, our visual performance thinking tool that aligns your goals, objectives, and action steps with your vision of prosperity. So um, here's just a couple thoughts on it. And a goal broken down actually becomes a plan. And when you can back your plan with action steps, so what do I actually need to do to make that plan happen? That's where you can make your dream a reality. I love this example. This is an example of a stylist in California. She lives in the Bay Area and she really wanted to make more money. So she wanted to increase her money in. And she used our visual thinking tool called the Q plan to define her vision of prosperity. And for her, that meant um, buying a house. It was very specifically her goal. And for those of you, if anyone's based in California, I don't know if anyone said that, but it's of course quite expensive to buy uh, a house, especially in the Bay Area. So she needed to increase her income significantly. So she mapped out her plan. She laid out, she wanted to buy a house. I actually don't think you can see it on these. And then on the back of it, she wrote specific goals, objectives, and action step steps to make that happen. And she was able to not only well over double her earnings in two years, she also just recently bought a house. 
Um, and then now it's super fun because every time she meets her goal, she makes a new plan, which is really an awesome practice. This is actually what this tool looks like. If you're curious about learning how to use this tool, I'll talk to you about it in um, at the end of this in our Plan to Prosper program. But you can also do this by making a vision board and then writing down your goals, right? So you don't necessarily have to enroll in your education. There's ways to do this. But the point is to align your visual dream of prosperity with specific goals, objectives, and action steps to make that a reality. And, um, and then to remind yourself of it and to look at it. Um, once a day and spend some time with it so you can get grounded. Susanna, I know this was a really a powerful tool for you. Can you talk to me about um, how this process really impacts your money in? Yeah, for sure. I think for me, uh, I mean, I always had goals and dreams. Like that was not the problem. I just had no idea how I was going to get there. So like in the beginning of the year, I'd be like, all right, this year I'm going to get rich and I'm going to get skinny and I'm going to whatever it is. And then the next year it was the same thing on the vision board with like no plan. Right. And so what I love about this is that it has the structure there. So it's like my, as a creative, I can see pictures. So I visually like the way that it looks, but it's in the little boxes and it, it just helped me really see my plan. So the left side here, guys, is like, what is you know, what your dream, this is what I want, right? And so I can look at that and that inspires me each day to work really hard, right? Then, you know, each day I'll take a look at the other side, which is how I'm gonna get there, right? So that's the roadmap to getting these things that I want, right? So looking at a number goal is super boring, but when I'm looking at this picture of like, oh yeah, I really wanted to buy this house, or like we wanna have a baby or we wanna travel, whatever it is, like seeing that picture is what really got me energized. Excellent, thanks so much, Susanna. I'm curious, do it in the chat, if write down or, Type in the chat if you write down your goals. Like if you're someone that writes down your goals, say yes or no. And then I also would love to hear if you're someone that has made or likes to make vision boards. People are, most people are saying, oh, yes, 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 no, not me. No and no. <laughs> okay. So is this something that you think you could put into practice and that you think would be helpful? Most people are saying no, 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 and no. Not to your second question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> okay, well, um, we'll go back to this in a little bit, guys, but we're going to move on to the next one. Number three, this is all about paying yourself first. So money invested grows. I'm curious, does anyone invest their money? Whether in real estate, whether in the stock market or in bonds, does anyone invest? Say yes or no. Says yes, I do. Bitcoin, no, no, okay. not enough. Yes, yes. Perfect. So some people do. Well, it's really talking about how um, paying yourself first, and especially if you investment invest it, which we're not even going to get into on this call, but will actually compound and make you more money over time. So a dollar today is not the same as a dollar tomorrow. So really thinking about if you were to put some money aside in a retirement plan or or in the market that will actually grow. And this is a super conservative number, by the way, 3%. Um, this is what your money would look like down the line from investing $100 weekly. And this was it would be what it would look like to invest $25 weekly. So you can see how um, you'll make interest from that initial investment. And the more money you make, of course, or the more money you invest, of course, the more you'll um, the more you will earn on that money. So here's what it looks like for $100 put away every single week what that would look like over 20 years, what that would look like over 10 years. So it's really powerful. And when we talk about paying yourself first, I wanna tell you an example of um, Lou. And Lou is a business owner. She uh, owns a salon and spa and she has about 25 employees. And she was reflecting to us on how she entered the 2009 or 2008 crisis, right? If anyone remembers that or was, was a working age professional at that time, it was, it was devastating for many people. And at that time, Lou had $2,000 to her name, but Lou also had two children. She had a house, she had payroll to meet. So she thought she was gonna have to file for bankruptcy. And um, she started to implement a practice we call Tuesday transfer. And this is a practice we teach in one of our other curriculums called Plan, uh, Plan for Profits. And it's just a simple practice where you automate and set up a certain percentage of your sales into a separate bank account, which we call a profit account. So it doesn't have to be on Tuesday, but the point is, is that it's automatic or you make it a religious habit if you can't make it automatic. So 
Louis, or her real name was actually Louisa, and uh, Lou or Louisa actually set this up way well before the pandemic. She took some financial literacy education through us through a plan to profit curriculum. And by the time the pandemic this year rolled around, she had $150,000 cash reserve. So she entered this pandemic without fear. She did not think that she was going to have to file for bankruptcy. She knew that she was going to be able to take care of her employees. And that's powerful. The power of that one habit and putting that religious practice into play uh, really grew her bank account. And then when she needed it, because as we've all learned through what's happened recently, that at some point you might need it and you don't want to be in a state of stress, setting up these habits now is the best time to do it. So if you're in a position and if you really want to um, put in a habit into place, I'd really encourage you to set this up either automated or put it on your calendar so you can implement this practice. Really, really powerful. Next is track your progress. And this is a huge one. It's not enough to make progress because if you're not tracking it, you don't really know that you're making progress. And this was Susanna, something that was huge for Susanna. So I'm going to let Susanna share her story um, when she met us. I think it was either four or five years ago. Yeah. So when I first went through um, the program, I was a decently busy stylist. I was a kind of a mid-level stylist at that point. And I was really, really working hard to move up to the next level in my salon, um, which just basically means a price increase. And I was like spinning my wheels, spinning my wheels, and I just couldn't get there. And so um, once I went through the program, I really learned all these tools for tracking that were super simple and super visual because I'm like, I don't want to look at a spreadsheet. I don't want to have to do a bunch of math. So having these tools really helped me um, to be able to start to actually look at my numbers, see what my goals were. And it was just crazy because like the first like quarter afterwards, so the first 13 weeks afterward, I was able to save up $5,000, which was enough to put down for my first, um, my first home, which as a, as a single female, I was just so empowered and really proud of myself. And, and talking about confidence with the numbers in my business, it really overflowed into really every area of my life, just having this abundance of confidence. And then um, luckily four years later, I was able to sell it for you know double what it was worth, which was just really cool and just put me on a really great financial trajectory. you know. But I think that that confidence and having the tools was really helped me just to focus and say, here are the actual steps that I need to follow. Perfect. Thank you, Susanna. And when Susanna talks about tools, this is actually the exact tool that Susanna used. It's something called the Cunity Tracker. And just for purposes of simplicity today, uh, just because we've only got a little bit of time left, what we really look at here on this gray line is looking at what your baseline is, right? So where you're coming from and what your past is. So we can see, and if you remember two number growth, your gas and speed or client count average ticket, we want to know where you're coming from. Then we set a target for 17%. And then here's where you do the work. And by work, I mean, spend two minutes tracking your numbers every single week. So how many clients did you see? How much did each client spend with you? What's the total? And then you can start to recognize patterns and watch these numbers grow. So that's a tool to track money in. I put up a free tool um, to track money out that is just a really simple budgeting tool and you can download it in the upper right hand corner where it says handouts. And how this works really simply is just every single month to start gaining accountability by tracking your um, expenses. So what you do is write the date, what the expense is for, what the company is, how much it's for, any notes around it, and start to ask yourself, is this a want or a need, right? Of course, rent, that's, you, you got to have shelter, but start to see where your expenses add up and what you can eliminate. And then your income minus your expenses, whatever's left at the end of the month, um, here's four things that you can do with that extra money. So that's just a simple tool and go, go ahead and download it and you can print it off if you're curious about it. And as, a, as far as money in goes and tracking money in, this really takes no time, you guys. It takes two minutes. And that's really what Susanna credits with allowing her to buy a home, allowing her to make more money and increase her earnings. And now she lives, I don't even remember what you said, you live in a wonderful place and you're so happy. And that's what we want for you. And it's just all boils down to those simple habits. Number five is to dispel the myths. And I'm curious if anyone can relate with these myths that I'm going to put up on the screen. So number one is I don't have enough time to manage my money. Let me know if that's ever been something that came up to you or, or for you, or if you resonate with that myth. And if it does resonate with you, I will dispel that very quickly. And this is always a very humbling quote to think about. Don't say you don't have enough time. You have exactly the same number of hours per day that were given to Helen Keller 
Michelangelo, Mother Teresa, and Albert Einstein. That is uh, a wake-up call, right? So you can have two minutes to take a look at your finances because that really contributes to your overall life. Number one is I don't earn enough to save. And I have Susanna's photo on here because she had, um, this was something that you told yourself and kind of this, what we refer to as how your lifestyle creep, I think is the same for it. But why don't you share a little bit about your experience there? I would think that probably a lot of you can relate to this that like, you know, over the years, your income has increased. And then I started to realize at the end of the month, I'm like, how do I have the same amount of money at the end of the month that I did $20,000 ago? So you just start realizing like how, like I thought if I have all this extra money, then I'm gonna be able to, you know, donate it to whatever charities, I'm gonna be able to save all this money and invest, but you, you just end up, yeah, your lifestyle creeps. So you just have higher bills basically, or you just spend more. So you end up not having any left. Right. So that goes back to this money in versus money out. Just because you're making more money and you have more money in, it doesn't mean that you need to also increase your money out, right? If you keep your money out the same, um, that's going to be a, that's going to be where you have more room at the end of the month to do things that you dreamed about, like travel, like invest, like invest in real estate, etc. Um, next next step is three um or next myth is number three which is i can't have fun or be spontaneous if i'm confined by a budget does anyone just cringe at the thought of a budget say yes or no and then also does anyone actually make a budget right now i'd love to hear in the chat yes we have cringing yes <laughs> definitely <Okay>. me <laughs> yeah well Susanna, yes. you were talking about yes. um you and your husband that both of you hate budgeting and you're just slightly um why don't you tell the story about how you guys manage budget budgeting in your household well it's funny because i am so right-brained and a creative and i hate spreadsheets but i'm like just this much better than my husband is so it's like you know the blind leading the blind over here and if we can do it like i promise you <laughs> That you can do it, but it's more simple than you think it'd be. Also, we're super spontaneous. We like to travel and we never want to miss out on a good time. So I always felt like, gosh, if I have to manage a budget, then I'm not to be the person that's like, we can't go on that trip because we can't afford it or we're trying to pay off debt, you know, and you don't want to be like a loser. So there's part of that too. <laughs> so um, I want to just re help you reframe the way you think about budgets. Budgets are not restrictive. It's actually a structure to help you create money freedom. Something that we talk about a lot with Kennedy is structure actually creates freedom. But especially as Susanna said, right brain dominant learners or creative learners, especially entrepreneurial professions, which all of you guys are, um, structure can be cringeworthy. And it's kind of like, that's gonna eliminate my freedom. But when it comes to budgeting, just think about it as a structure that will allow you to create um, future freedom. Is a structure and a tool to help you make smart choices it allows you from going to going from reactivity all the time um, to being proactive about your money. Um, and it can be a communication tool. And it also is just a way to measure your money in uh, subtracted by money out and what's left at the end of the day. So if you're curious on making a budget or if you want to take action after this call, make sure you download that handout in the upper right hand corner. Next is to start a habit streak. Um, a great example of that is the example I just told you about Tuesday transfer and Louisa's example with that and either structure that on a given day where you transfer a certain percentage into a separate bank account or more recommended is to automate it. Another example of a habit streak is Tuesday tracking or two minute tracking that we call using this tracker. So Susanna, why don't you talk about how you made that um, a habit streak for you? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing is like making sure at the end of the day that I need to track on, let's say it's Tuesday, let's say it's Saturday, whatever it is that I do not leave the salon until it's done. I finish my last guest, I sweep up my station, I sit my ass down and I do it because I know myself well enough that if I don't, it's gonna be like, oh yeah, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And then, it, you know, four weeks go by and I haven't done it. So I think that just, and it takes two minutes, but it's hard when you've been really busy behind the chair all day and you want to get out of there. But um, that's really helped me be able to kind of have that structured. So for me, it was Tuesdays. So I would put it down. Awesome. Thank you. And I think we all know what a habit is, but it's just simply a behavior that has been repeated enough times to become automatic, right? So it takes the work out of it. And that's what we really want to do when it comes to money, especially if these are not natural habits for you, is to start making them a habit so then you don't have to think about it anymore. Next is practicing gratitude. Uh, and gratitude is so important. And it's not an original thought, you guys, but it is so important. Um, 
if you start appreciating everything, including money, your life will be more filled with money, right? You get more of what you appreciate. So express gratitude for money coming in. I know it's been a really hard time, especially over the past several months. So when you do have a client um, and when money does come in, just be thankful for it. And, and I truly believe that you will get more of it. Um, and also understanding your worth because you are worth it. Each of you brings a unique skill, whether you're behind the chair, whether you're behind a table, whether you're a nail tech, whether you're a tattoo artist or a piercer, um, everything that you do is valued and worth it and, um, and you deserve to be financially successful. So um, that's another thing is, is reminding yourself of the, pro the power and the practice of closure. Make that a habit. If you find yourself getting stuck, that's something to always think about in your mind. Why am I stuck? Why am I not taking action? And I encourage you to write it down right in the center and just you can make this yourself or you can get the tool on our website is right in the center. What's holding me back? What do I need to get closure of? And then mind map the solutions because then you can continue to move forward. Oh, and what I also wanted to share with this is um, she, Corinne actually used this as um, a habit to help her get closure, which is being grateful. So you can see that as part of her habit in order to help her get uh, over her financial limiting beliefs. Here's just some statistics about um, actual impacts of gratitude on patients. And we have a tool that we teach called the GNA journal, which is all about writing down your gratitudes and accomplishments. So um, that's just a really great practice as well. And then lastly, and I think we're just about right on time, which is fantastic, is to educate yourself. I cannot say this enough. And for everyone that's on here, kudos to you, because that's exactly what you're doing. You're investing your ATM, right? Your attention and time. And Booksy has, has really um, worked hard to bring this to you guys. So I want to thank Booksy as well. But education is so powerful. So think about just a couple things. And I'm going to give you a couple of words that matter just as starts. So number one is an asset. So an asset is anything of value that's owned. So go ahead and write in the chat uh, an example of an asset. So anything of value that you owned, and that means something that you do not have any debt on, right? You own it outright. Next would be a liability. That's something where there's an amount owed. So for example, if you have a car payment and you owe money on a car, your car is not an asset. Your car is a liability because you owe money on it. Um, some people would argue that a, that a house, and this is kind of controversial, but that a house can be considered a liability because you owe money on it, right? And it's not yours owned outright until the mortgage is down. So just start to think about your purchases in terms of assets versus liabilities. And then lastly, net worth. Net worth is simply what you own versus what you owe and the difference between them. So um, just start to think about that. Every time you make a purchase, is this an asset or is this a liability? And I want to wrap this up and, and then we'll go for questions. And I want to remind you guys about the contest. So for those of you who are on here, you can win. Um, money is not the most important thing in, in life, but it is like oxygen on the gotta have it scale, right? So if you know that you interact with money, we all interact with money every single day. Um, so let's learn a little bit about it and help yourself get educated. And if you want to continue learning more about um, what we went through today, I just gave you a little bit of a snippet of it. And if you want to get some of these visual tools, you can go to cunityinc.com, Q-N-I-T-Y-I-N-C.com. And if you see where I've circled here where it says courses, you'll drop down and you'll see a course called Plan to Prosper. That is probably what I'd recommend for everyone uh, to continue this process and also get the tools. So... When you join this program, if you register now, you'll get access to a live group and you'll learn how to use all these tools. And that group starts on January 4th. Um, so I've put the website up, communityinc.com if you're curious. Two programs that we have there, again, I would recommend Plan to Prosper for most of you. Um, and that's really about increasing money in. If you're curious um, and if you have staff or if you're curious about overall financial management, we do have a program called Plan for Profits, and that's all about money out, which you can look into that on our website. So going back to where we started, to prosper, manage your three most valuable currencies, attention, time, and money. And it was such a pleasure to be with each of you today. And again, thank you so much to Booksy for putting this together. We're super excited to be partners with the Booksy team, and they care so much about this industry as we do. Um, and I'm just super grateful to have all of you here. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and um, if there's any questions, I will answer on the call. 
So go ahead and put it in the chat screen. And I'm also going to type to uh, make sure if you did not enter, uh, enter the contest that you guys did so, so you can win. Community Inc. and at Booksy Biz. Great. I'm so glad this was helpful, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'll give it a couple minutes. You are so welcome, Delaney and Nicole. I'm so glad you joined. And then if you want to look at Community's programs, you can go here. So the contest, that's a great reminder. I'm actually going to put that back on the screen. Um, so give me one moment. And I will show you what it is. And, and you then, Oh, yeah? No, go ahead. Let's see. Go ahead, Susanna, while I'm pulling that up. Okay, perfect. We had a couple of people that had to jump off the call. Oh, okay. Um, and wanted some more information. So I just I just took down their emails, so um, I didn't know that people were kind of wondering what information was going to be shared after this and that kind of thing. So, okay, I'm going to stop sharing and put this contest back up for you. Okay, so the contest is, and Susanna, can you see the contest on my screen? I'm not seeing it right now. Are you guys seeing it? Let me make sure I reshare it. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, hang on a sec. There we go. Okay, now you should be able to. Okay, let me see. Can you see it now? Chad said that he can't hear. We have a couple people saying they can't hear. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. They said that they're okay. Perfect. Okay. So you should be able to see the screen. I'm going to um, bring it up full screen again for you. And um, you just want to follow Cunity Inc. and at Booksy Biz on Instagram. And then you can take a photo or take a screenshot of either your notes, of you, um, of yourself, of a screenshot of this um, video session, and then make sure you tag us both at Community Inc. and Booksy Biz. And then uh, the winners will be selected in a couple of hours. So I'm gonna leave this screen on momentarily, and then I'll show you what you can win, but I can also tell you verbally. Two people will win um, wall clippers and a wall demo set. And then uh, one person will win an enrollment to our Plan to Prosper program, which is um, kind of a, a little taste of what I give, what I gave you guys today. You'll go much deeper into that and also join the live group. So it's a really, really um, good value for both of these. And we just want to thank you for being a part of it. So here's what the clippers look like. So a cordless magic clip and then a detailer. And then um, you'll also win this program in the five module program. Erin, Nicole is asking, is it going to be a photo of, a, of them like attending this seminar or um, following the accounts? Oh, great question. Great question, Nicole. Um, it's you and your with this webinar or a selfie. So we'll know that you followed us because we'll be able to see it. But thank you for clarifying that. So um, I will put those up here again if you need them. And then anyone have any questions or thoughts? Oh, that's weird. It says when I remove the screen, the volume disappears. Does it for you, Susanna? I can hear you. Yeah, I can. Can anyone else? Hmm. Yeah, Chad's saying that he can't. Who, who can? Uh, someone said they had the issue earlier. That's so maybe weird. it's just like a setting. Yeah. Nicole can Nicole hear. Said she it might be, um, it might just be a setting. I don't know if you're on your phone. Okay, so it looks like chat, it might just be an issue on your phone. And Jennifer, it sounds like it. Um, well, I'm going to give it a couple minutes and then we'll wrap up. But if anyone's got any questions, go ahead and ask. And thank you so much to Booksy for hosting this. And I look forward to seeing you on our social channel and um, for one of you guys winning the enrollment to Plan to Prosper. Chad, Susanna, do you want to type to Chad? It looks like he's probably can't hear us. 
that looks like. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, my volume's on, so I'm not sure what that is. Well, I'll give you. I'll give you guys my um, personal email, and you can send me an email if you've got any questions. Um, John, thank you so much. That's a wonderful question and I would love to answer it, but I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Um, so John, can you confirm that you can hear me and Lauren as well? Okay, John, you can hear me. Chad, if you, if it's saying no volume for you, you might have to check your settings. Okay. Um, so John, I love that question. So thank you. Um, very much for for asking that and as someone new that to the industry as a barber where do you see the industry in a few years well i definitely think that there's going to be some changes and i also think um that one of the beautiful things about this industry is that it's an industry founded on human touch and human touch and creativity will never be able to be outsourced so i believe there's a, a degree of safety in that and i believe it's a really powerful career but I also believe that the industry needs to change. And part of what needs to change is understanding that being really strong technically and being really strong with your craft is not enough. So it's really important to also gain business acumen, to gain financial literacy. And that's exactly what you're doing. So I think there is a huge promising um, start to the industry. This profession, spa and salon, is projected to grow. Um, and it's an in, in, it's an industry founded upon a skill and on human touch. So that's my answer to that. Can I jump in on that too? Yeah. I think what's super encouraging for me um, as a hairstylist is the amount of money that young, especially women, but men too, that young people are spending on beauty, right? So we have our 20 to 40 year olds spending thousands of dollars on injections, fillers, you know, getting their lips done, their lashes, their nails, so like a few hundred bucks on hair is nothing, you know, a $50 haircut for a man isn't that expensive to people anymore. So I think it's really cool that people are putting a high investment on their beauty. And when they step into your place, they're already telling you that they put a value on that by even coming and seeing you. So that's something that I found to be exciting for the future. Excellent. All right, well, I'm going to give it two more minutes and then we're going to wrap up. So speak now if you've got more questions. And I'm sorry for people that are having volume issues. It looks like, um, you know, it looks like our sound is good. John, I'm glad that, that you feel confident and you should be confident. And welcome to the industry. It's a wonderful, wonderful industry. All right, well, um, you're welcome to stay on. Otherwise, we'll sit here and then the Booksy team, you can close this out in a couple minutes. And thank you so much for everyone to joining. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And I also left my email if anyone has any questions. Um, and Tim, this is recorded, and if you want, oh yes, um, as far as CEU, I think you can email Booksy on that. If you're in Illinois, I should also mention that. Thank you so much. You get um, one continuing education hour. So, and if you want the tools, well, if there are visual thinking tools, you can go to cunityinc.com and just type to the website. And if you're looking to um, win the wall clippers or win the contest, make sure you post it on social media and you might be selected to win. All right, Katie and Booksy team, if you want to wrap this up, we're good to go.